Righto, hi everybody. Uh, this fortnight I'm going to make a confession and then I'm going to, I don't know, share with you the epiphany that I had, which is really quite, really quite simple, but it worked for me. It's about tone and mood. So I don't know about you, but I have always avoided tone and mood um, when I'm teaching close reading or my study text or unfamiliar text, whatever. Um, simply because it's kind of, they're kind of abstract concepts and so I'll briefly mention it but then I won't really go into it but I've been doing a lot of work lately about um, purpose in particular and, and starting off by thinking about well how is the writer feeling because I think that writing always comes from a feeling, you know, they're angry about something or they want to reflect, they're sad about something, they want to uh, recount, go over an experience. So it's about that um, that feeds into the tone that they that comes across in their writing, of course. So if you want students to really get behind that, that purpose and un understand that purpose and to write about that purpose, they're going to have to think about the tone of the writer. So an easy way to remember the difference between tone and mood is this. This is one of the things that always put me off. So tone is, comes from the typist and mood is about me, the, the uh, reader. So that's one easy way to do it. And then of course you can just Google words for Africa about that, that help you describe tone and mood. Now, you can get lists of words that are about tone and lists of words that are, are about mood, but really, generally, they are emotions. So the typist, the writer feels them, and so does the reader. They're going to be different things often, but they're still, they can still use, students can still use that vocabulary. So tone is about the typist, mood is about me, Tone is created by the typist. Mood is about me. Why is it important? Because it helps connect students with the purpose of that writer. Okay, and along with that purpose comes the effect on the reader. Okay, so if you start talking about feelings, the feelings of the writer, and the, then the feelings, the effect on the reader, that will make things a little bit more accessible than using those words tone and mood perhaps. So they could start using when they're writing about their reading um, or talking about their reading, students could say, well, hey, this makes the audience feel, the readers feel, you know, and here I think the, the writer is feeling. So start with that and then just shift them into those words tone and mood. And just remind them there's an easy way to remember tone is by the typist and mood is about me. And don't be afraid of tone and mood again. Hope this helps. See ya.